What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv, video audio stuff, and in this video I'm talking techniques for shooting better macro video. I shoot a ton of macro b-roll when I do my product review videos, so this is the style I'm going to use for my examples. So these are going to be practical tips for upping your macro b-roll game, and I'll show you how I went from this to this. Let's do it. Before we dive in, if you find this video helpful at all, if it saves you time, if it helps you get the shot, if it has a positive impact on your workflow at all, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. It's a non-profit thing, the idea being with any funds from Patreon, I put back into the channel to buy gear, review it, and then I give that gear away to you guys. Buying gear gets really expensive, and this is just a really elegant way of improving my content, which I hope is pretty good already. Plus you get the opportunity to win some awesome gear, so it's win-win. So there can be many problems and difficulties with shooting macro video, and sometimes I feel like a change of attitude is necessary when switching from regular focal lengths to macro. To kick off, and this might seem a little bit obvious, but really feature the detail. I always think to myself, when holding this in my hand, what elements of this would I want to see really up close? Specifically, I'm looking for logos, textures and any interesting key features that this product has. Secondly, as I'm usually filming my macro b-roll for a product review, I'm thinking ahead about what I'm going to be talking about in that video, and the way to do this of course is to is to make a really solid shot list. Plus, with everything that I'm featuring, I'm tweaking the angle, the focal length, and I'm basically trying to shoot more than I need every single time. Next I would say, for God's sake, switch over to manual focus. Don't get me wrong, I'm usually a really big fan of autofocus for shooting regular video, but not in this case. If you've ever shot macro before, you'll know just how crucial it is to hit the exact focus point. So, manual focus, punch in, nail it. A crucial next step is to seriously stop your lens's aperture down big time. When using macro lenses, you can have such a razor thin depth of field, and that's just because you're so damn close to whatever it is you're shooting. And in my opinion, I want all the depth of field I can possibly get. I know it's a trade-off. You're gaining lots of depth of field, you're losing lots of light. But this is the way that cinematographers approach your choice of aperture. Your exposure shouldn't dictate your aperture. Your aperture should be based on how much depth of field you want. And this nicely brings me on to my next point, which is to make sure you've got a light which gives you plenty of power. Why high-powered lights? Well, the main reason that you'd want lots of power is to use more and better diffusion. The more layers of diffusion you use, the more power you're going to need to get the desired level of brightness. And remember, we're already stopped down, so we've got some making up to do. I recently picked up a Lupo Movie Light 300 Dual Color Pro and reviewed it and loved it, and that kind of thing is perfect. Of course, if you want to see that review, it's up there and it's down there. If you still don't quite have enough power from your lights, that's unfortunately when it's time to use a little bit of ISO. I'm very lucky to use a Sony a7S III, which has two native ISOs of 640 and the higher one at 12,800, and it's great. I actually really frequently use the higher native ISO so that I can stop my lens down loads and I get a really good level of exposure and even at 12,800 it's super clean. Another technique I love is to shoot in low light and then pass a little LED light over the product. It just gives a really different dark and contrasty look, almost like a negative version of the fully lit style. In terms of movement, I definitely favour just the soft, smooth movement you get from a fluid tripod head, or maybe a slider, but certainly I, I certainly prefer those two over handheld or gimbal, of course. I'd also certainly recommend adding some stabilization in post, which is not normally something that I'd recommend, but with these kind of shots, they actually work really well. I also wouldn't recommend much in the way of high frame rates, unless it's a slow-mo shot that you just have to get. When you think about it, we've got a closed aperture lens plus, you know, really fast shutter speed and it's just not a combo that 
works that well, you'll end up cranking the ISO even more. So to recap, we went from this dull looking, shaky, noisy looking shot with nowhere near enough depth of field, to this slick looking, super clean, stylized look with lovely movement and the appropriate amount of depth of field. It's night and day and I love the results. Anyway, now it's time to recap and gather everything we've learned in this video to pop it in a doggy bag of tips for you to take away. Feature the detail that you'd want to see up close. Look for logos, textures, and any kind of key features. You can't go wrong with creating a shot list and then shooting more footage than you think you need to. For me, manual focus rules when shooting macro video, but I am curious, do you ever use autofocus? Stop down big time to get your desired depth of field. Worry about the exposure later, it's depth of field you need. Of course, stopping down requires lots of light, so powerful lighting is a must. If your camera has a higher native ISO, this is the time to step up and use it. Don't be afraid of it, I know with some cameras you get slightly less dynamic range, but really, this is what they're made for. Try shooting low light and then using an LED to get some really alternative, moody, high contrast shots. I recommend careful, smooth and steady movement with macro video. As you're usually using a fairly long focal length, it's so easy to get really shaky footage just from any other type of movement. I also prefer to stick with regular frame rates. Higher frame rates are great, but the fast shutter speeds just sap even more of the available light. Anyway, that's all for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I want to hear from you. How do you tackle shooting macro video? If you have any pearls of wisdom about this subject, please pop them in the comment section below. After all, this channel has always been about sharing and learning. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. <laughs>